minus 15, stand by for terminal count. 10, 9, 8, Side boost, uh, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. On Tuesday, February 6, at about 3.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, SpaceX Falcon Heavy had a successful launch at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Falcon Heavy is currently the most powerful operational rocket in the world by a factor of two, according to SpaceX. This rocket has the ability to lift into orbit nearly 64 metric tons, or about 141,000 pounds. And this is fantastic. The stage is finally being set for humanity to enter a new era of spaceflight, which could soon, hopefully, enter us into a new era of space exploration. But of course we have to take baby steps and master the basics. Now I love seeing the results from the very forefront of technological development in the space industry, because with each new advancement or innovation in rocket propulsion means humanity is another step closer to making our solar system more accessible and hopefully distant parts of the universe. But first we have to get the rocket off the ground and into the atmosphere. But how do we do that? Now rocket propulsion happens to be a wonderful example of the use of the conservation of momentum. Simply put, the principle states that if the net external forces on a system is zero, then the total internal mechanical momentum is constant. Now the basic problem rockets try to solve is this. How can a rocket get itself moving without any external forces to push on or be pushed by? Like I said earlier, we have to master these basic principles. But how a rocket will accomplish this is by designing the engine to throw the spent fuel out of the back of the rocket. This is Newton's second law at work. As the fuel is being expelled out of the rocket, it will move it in the opposite direction. We call this force thrust, and thrust is what's going to get the rocket to move through the air and through space. So today I want to walk with you through an example on how thrust can be calculated using classical mechanics. Great, now that we have that out of the way, let's try and calculate thrust and see if we can get accurate results. This equation here is going to be the basic principle for rocket propulsion here. So on the right hand term, you may recognize this. This is Newton's second law. Force is going to equal the mass times derivative of velocity, which we know is acceleration. And on the right hand term here, this, this, uh, this term is going to play the role of the force here. So these terms here, Vx is going to be the exhaust velocity. This is going to be the speed at which the, the fuel is being uh, expelled from the exhaust, which is going to create a momentum in the opposite direction. And here is going to be the derivative of mass, which is going to be noted as m dot. So this is going to be the change in mass with respect to time. At the initial, before any rocket is launched, it's going to have an initial mass. But that mass is going to change uh, over time as the fuel is being expended. Uh, most of a rocket's mass may be in the form of fuel. So as the rocket is expending fuel, this mass is going to decrease, which is why we need this term here. And so putting all this together, we're going to come out and get the overall equation for thrust, which is going to be thrust is going to equal the negative change in mass with respect to time times the exhaust velocity. Now one thing to note is the change in mass here is going to be negative because thrust is going to be positive. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, use a small, simple example to try and put these concepts together. Now suppose after launch, our rocket was expelling mass at a rate of 25,000 kilograms per second. And its exhaust velocity was reaching speeds of 5,000 meters per second. So let's use our equation for thrust that we just went over to calculate how many pounds of uh, force is 
uh, being used on by the rocket here. So we have thrust equals negative. And remember we said that because thrust is going to have a positive quantity, that this also must be negative as well. Negative 25,000 times 5,000 meters per second. And our thrust is going to be 125 million newtons. Now, we need to convert this into tons because we need to understand that the initial weight of the rocket is going to be in tons. So we need to make sure that the amount of thrust is going to be greater than the initial weight of our rocket if it's going to take off. So one ton is about 90,000 newtons. <clears throat> And so we're going to just go ahead and divide our 125 million newtons over 9,000 newtons per ton. So the newtons cancel out and what we will get is a thrust that equals 13,888 tons. That's how much force is going to be applied after the initial, the initial rocket launch. And of course, the weight of the rocket is going to decrease after that because of this term here, and because fuel is being expent from the exhaust. So that's a pretty good number. Uh, I didn't give an initial weight for the rocket here, but as long as this is greater than the initial weight of the rocket, uh, it will take off. Uh, it will also depend on how close the initial weight of the rocket is to this, uh, the amount of thrust here. But you should be good to go. If this, uh, the weight of the rocket was less than that, then obviously it wouldn't take off here. But just keep that in mind.